Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're looking at the Type 052C Destroyer in DCS World. Now we've already looked at the 052B Destroyer, which the, the C is obviously based on the B, but it has um, superior, massively superior weaponry, as we'll find. So, zero. Oh, I've got Daishi with me uh, here, who's doing all the work behind the scenes. Say hello, Daishi. Hello. Okay, the uh, 52C uh, NATO nickname the Lu Yang 2 class destroyer. Class details the 052C class destroyer is built using technology originally intended for the 052B destroyer. So, if we remember the 052B, it was originally intended to be this the C, but uh, had to be cut short if you like and had inferior weapons. Using lessons learned from the Gulf War that showed the deficiencies of the Chinese Navy ships. This includes the HHQ-9 long-range missiles and the Type 364 AESA phased array radar systems. Built on the 052B hull, the ship has a larger superstructure to accommodate the Type 364 radar. The ship is called the Chinese Aegis by the Chinese Netizens. This ship has a lull in production due to moving the Xinyan shipyard to the Xinyan shipyard. Anti-submarine warfare rockets have been removed to make room for the VLS, the vertical launch system, which you can see there. And a towed sonar array has been added. Most of the other stats are the same as the 052 B. So it's a destroyer with a VLS. That's pretty impressive. Um, okay. So do we know? Do we you know if there's any NATO destroyers with VLS? By the way, uh, Aegis destroyers is yeah, like Aegis destroyers. There's a couple offshoots, like the Japanese have one that's similar. I want to say, uh, I want to say there's another one, but I can't remember. Okay, D, uh, DCS specific info, uh, type 05T Lang Tsao class destroyer, NATO reporting name Lu Yang 2, uh, Xinjiang Changzing, yard number is unknown. It is, is DDG 150, is that a hull number? Yep. Roger, so that's our particular hull there. Laid down in 2009, launched, wow, so this is modern, launched 2010 and commissioned 2013, so it's only been operating for. Uh, for six years, five or six years. Six have been planned and six active. So does that mean that there are six total that have been planned? Yeah, they they eventually came out with a D version, which has got like a more up-to-date version of their ASA. Roger, and Roger. a few other things like... Yeah, basically right. like uh, the Mark 41 set you have on Aegis Destroyers, like the Orly Burks. Mm -hmm. They came up with their own version that's on the D. Roger, okay. Displacement full is seven thousand tons, and that's quite a lot for a destroyer. In my in my mind, would you consider that a heavy destroyer if there is such a thing? Because I've seen I'd cruisers, have, I've seen cruisers at eight thousand tons. I'd have to compare it's, it. I think destroyers have suffered from creature creature well, feature creep over time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're getting a bit fat by the sound of things. It kind of defeats the original intention of what the destroyer was, the fast-moving kind of torpedo boat. But Okay, anyway, um, 7,000 tons. It was a big fatty length, 155 metres. Beam so across 17 metres. Draft, how far it is in the water, up to 6 metres. Speed, 29 knots. So that is quite, you know, bearing in mind we had World War II destroyers of over 35 knots. That's uh, moderate, um, but, you know, uh, contemporary. Uh, Range 4,500 is at nautical miles. Yep. At 15, a cruise, basically, uh, on the diesels. And a crew of 280. Again, that's massive for a destroyer. It's a really big destroyer. Um, so I'd say destroyer creeping onto cruiser. Uh, engineering is... So engines, uh, like most modern ships, you don't just have an engine. You have several different engines, and you use the engine that is most efficient for what you want to do. Combine diesel or gas. And so for crews, they're going to turn on the two diesels, uh, which we have just under 10,000 horsepower. Is that total for two diesels? Yep. Roger. So that's all about efficiency. And if you're in combat, you want to make you near 30 knots, then you've got your two uh, gas turbines pumping out um, many 36,000 horsepower. Um, and it's uh, you wouldn't have them working together usually. Two shafts, and we think probably uh, variable pitch propellers. Anything else you want to mention about the engineering? Uh, not much. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, we're going to move on to the electronics. And this is the... I think this must be the most modern vessel in DCS, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to see some pretty high-tech stuff. 
First of all, we've got the mainstay, the Type 346 radar, NATO name Dragon Eye. So I haven't seen this before, so this is our first look at the 346 by the looks of it. Range up to 450 kilometers, so massive. Um, uh, in fact, is this uh, air search or is this uh, air and surface? I think it's air and surface. Uh, so it's up to 450 kilometers, which is just like halfway around the world. It's ridiculous. Uh, C and S band. It's a three dimensional A set S band search radar. It uses C band for the HHQ9A, which is uh, is the SAM missile. It's a big integrated radar that does all sorts of things. Note it's three dimensional. Note all of the radars we use in DCS world are two dimensional in terms of aircraft. These are three dimensional, uh, much superior, but obviously bigger and whatnot. Um, we have then a type. Oh, um, yes? Yeah, also to mention about 346, it is. Similar to the spy ones on the uh, Aegis destroyers, scans really fast. The difference is that one's passive, so there's only one transmitter or receiver that goes to all the all the different uh, antennas on uh, on all four different things. Whereas this one's got like multiple blocks, and each one has its own transmit receiver, so it can like defeat e ECM a little better, but it's going to go out a little less. Roger. Pretty much the most advanced radar in the game, as far as I know. Roger, agree. Also, yeah. Also, scans really fast. Like, oh, uh, like a single sweep for a Hornet. This thing would probably do like ten to twenty. Roger. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, sweep frequency is incredibly important. Um, type three four six. So, uh, when we say type three four six, people at home are probably thinking, "Oh, it's a big dish that spins around." It's, it's not going to be that, is it? It's going to be an array. Of sensors, isn't it? I'm, I'm guessing it's not just a, a dish. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah. Um, you, I found a picture with the with the fight with the faceplate off that's used for the air cooling, mm -hmm. but uh, typically you only see like the flat panels on mm -hmm. on like uh, early Burks or Ticonderogas. Yeah. You usually only see the faceplate, but this is going to have the antennas exposed while it's skin built. Roger. Cool. Okay, uh, right, anyway, let's push on. We've got a 517, nature name P-Sticks. We're weird names, but okay. Um, I was actually, um, that, that one down there, Bandstand, uh, we, we talked about where these weird names come from and different theories where they come from. I found out where Bandstand came from. It's actually from the World War II. Um, uh, one of the original 271 radars. I'm reading a book about at the moment. And um, dates all the way back, 70 plus years, bandstand. But anyway, sorry, let's carry on. Uh, 517 P sticks, it's a three up to 350 kilometers uh, versus uh, against a four meter squared radar cross section. Four meters squared is an F 15C, basically. Um, so that's obscenely good. Uh, 100 kilometers versus a 0.1 meter squared, which is an F 117 stealth fighter. So. Apparently, you can pick up an F-117 stealth fighter. Well, uh, I don't know. It remains to be seen. Uh, it's a two-dimensional VHF A-band early warning radar. So, uh, as on most modern ships like this, you won't just have one radar. You would have multiple radars. And even, again, going back to World War II, even, uh, you'd have various radars. Two, maybe three radars uh, doing different things on ships, which is uh, very interesting. We have an, it's, uh, kind of, it's kind of funny you mentioned the World War II radars because this is using some of those earlier bands that they would use. Roger. It's been found out that the stealth ships, like F-35s even and such, they're prone to be detected by these lower frequency VHF and HF radars, but it's it's really fuzzy, so it's like mm -hmm. you you can't really get like a super great fix, but you can at least no, point there. someone who can mm -hmm. kill it. Yeah, and that's, I guess the most important thing, know it's there, and then you can alert people that might be able to go and get EO or whatever to try and take it down. Roger, absolutely. Okay, uh, then we're on to said bandstand, the Mineral uh, ME reporting on bandstand, Russian surface search radars in radomes detects surface to surface missiles 20 to 35 kilometers. Will this be using it in DCS world? As we found out when doing a lot of these videos for these ships and combined arms, a lot of them just don't use their bandstand uh, for some reason. We think they may be bugged, I'm not sure. We'll find out later. Apart the ME, um, so again, this is an array. Uh, it's an active element of 65 kilometers, which is an active radar com component with over the horizon capability, which is just beyond me how they do that. 
Um, we have a passive element, a listening element of 185 kilometers detection range, passive targeting over the horizon radar and can do ELINT, so collection of, if you like, hostile radar intelligence. Uh, we have a data link element, as uh, all modern ships would do, code name light bulb, 185 um, uh, kilometers, a data link antenna, part of the bandstand, it is in two radar. So that's going to talk to other ships, other aircraft, other uh, coalition units to build up the bigger uh, situational awareness. We have a Type 364, uh, not 346, uh, which is a Seagull Sea reporting name, 0 to 0.0 to 130 kilometers, primary, primarily for the 730 Seawiz. Uh, can also be used for the air and surface to sur surface missile search. So note that we have active overlap of various systems here uh, for redundancy purposes. Uh, um, and the 730 would be the 30 mil Gatling gun Seawizz? Yep. Uh, part of the Cash Tan series. Uh, we have a Type 344 as a rice lamp, uh, 200 meters to 28 kilometers. Fire control radar for the HPJ 87 gun. Also has a laser range finding and a TV optical tracker. Note that again, back to World War II, even World War II heavy ships, uh, not necessarily the smaller ships, heavy ships uh, all had radar guided guns, uh, which I found an interesting piece of history. Uh, we have two times type 347 Gulf Rice Bowls, which I've seen before. These are 30 kilometers against two meter squared uh, radar cross section. That would be something like a, uh, an F5. F5, I think it's 2.5 meters, so F5 and smaller, maybe a warbird. Uh, radar used for type uh, for the SeaWiz, uh, and it's on the actual SeaWiz independent units. Uh, so we'll probably have, probably have several Rice Bowls and 15 kilometers against a stealth fighter, apparently. Um, two times OFC3 question mark to range electro optical fire control. So as backup, if radar is not possible or suitable, we have electro optical uh, fire control for the type the 730C whizzes range as well. But, you know that depends on so many things. Uh, it doesn't. It's not worth saying. Uh, stand by. Everything's recording and it is good. Uh, we have two times type 756 uh, fin curve mod 400 meters to 46 kilometers navigation radar uh, used both on civilian and military aircraft. That should be pretty easy to spot. We have an MGK 335MS-E 35 kilometer range on usage. Active passive sonar has comms ability detects subs uh, up to recall that, uh, to 12 kilometers and torpedoes at two kilometers um we have uh, in fact anything you want to say on the 335 any hey, like the 30 meter kilometers on usage depends on like how you're using it so you might get more or less you might get less range depending on what how you roger i mean again reading books at the moment about the predecessor for sonar asdic in world war Two, and um it's a difficult thing to use it depends on sea conditions like 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 you said if there's aerated water then it, it's going to give you false returns if if the ship is swaying um then um i guess these are all gy gyro stabilized but uh you know sea conditions are going to depend on your range so much and other conditions um anyway uh then we have type 206 which is an improvement over the b it's 125 kilometer range passive towed sonar array compared to the that there sonar array which would be on for instance a uh, nato cruiser uh the idea of this do you see correct me if i'm wrong is it's a a bit like the um uh, uh, the passive sonar on the ship hull but you can tow it behind the ship low down uh through the hot water into the cold water where you can get um better rain much better range and accuracy would you agree with that yeah it's you know like the basic construction of it is just it's a cable full of just different microphones and you know, like the way this one's built it doesn't have the bulky thing that mm -hmm. like those vds units because you don't have anything that needs to transmit it's just simply mm -hmm. listening it's so just, just, you know, nice and compact roger i just dangle it out there um and i can always use these things as uh, a deco oh i can see the, i see the one just below so part of that as well can be a type five six six two uh with a two kilometer range which is a toad sonar 
acoustic that's what I'm going to say I'll change to that acoustic uh, decoy so uh, that you can dangle behind the ship um, to uh, thwart uh, propeller uh, homing missiles uh, sorry missiles or torpedoes um, and this was done a long time ago again in World War Two. You could t you could dangle decoys uh, rear of the ship by a few hundred meters or a few hundred feet, and that will uh, attract the the NAT torpedoes as they would have been called back then. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Anything you want to say on the decoy sonar decoy? Yeah, this one's more of like a noisemaker. It it might not help against the ones that are wake are wake homing, where it it detects the pressure differences made by the propellers, but mm. it'll do pretty good at distracting like. Your uh, active or passive homing torpedoes. Well done. Okay, uh, so next we've got a, a suite, which is a HRJZ726. It's the electronic warfare suite consisting of ECM and ESM systems. Remind me what ESM is? Uh, it's a collection, data collection, I've forgotten. Yep, uh, electronic support measures. I like the ELAN pod on the uh, Viggins one, really good example. Roger. Uh, consisting of the 726-1, uh, which is the ESM and the radar, the 26-2, just ESM, the dash 3, the ECM combined unit, electronic countermeasures, dash 5, ESM equipment, export name. Thus, uh, we also have 4 times 18 type uh, 7264 uh, motorized countermeasure launchers. It uses flares, chaff, smokescreen, and acoustic jamming. So... Are these the uh, kind of um, uh, like rocket or, or kind of mortar systems that can fire these chaff and flare and whatnot up into the air, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, the only real difference between this acoustic jamming and the Type 562 is 562. You tell it you only got one, if it blows up, you're kind of screwed, where these guys, you've got a limited amount of uses to launch out, so each one's got their benefits. And Roger, so we've got four times launchers, and each launcher has 18 tubes that can be loaded with whatever needs loading. That's fine. Uh, we've got a H-Z BJ-1 CCS. Uh, this is a decentralized... Uh, you best you best describe this one, Daishi. Quick way to explain it. It's like their way of Aegis. It's using like fiber optics and all that to connect all the sensors together. So it, It's really close to Aegis at this point, the, the combat control system. Roger, so it's basically connecting information from all these different systems, which traditionally would be operated by different humans and kept, you know, kept separate all together um, uh, uh, to make correct decisions. Um, okay, cool. Uh, anything on sensors before we go to armament? Uh, I think we covered it all. Right, so this is the fun bit, obviously. So we've got uh, 6 times 6 plus 2 times 6 HHQ9, 48. So is that 48 total in the magazine? Roger. So these are VLS launched HSQ nines. Um, a range of twenty five to one twenty to one fifty kilometers. Again, that it's hard to give you a total range. Um, and it is a payload of a one hundred and eighty kilo frag. So it's not an accurate missile. Instead, it's a big high explosive warhead. Um, and it's cold launch, medium to long range, two stage missile using thrust thrust vector. Well. Now this is interesting, I asked Aishi what this was based on, and we think it's semi-based on the S-300 with possible um, aspects taken from uh, Patriot. Any comments about that? I think it's used for, like, the guidance part might be from Patriot, possibly, mm -hmm. but the uh, the missile itself is based off of the 300 PMU, which is a little different than the 300F. Roger, we're used to a 300F in DCS when it comes to naval um, that's the naval version of the, of the S-300, obviously. Um, that's interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see what it's like to face that missile, to see what it looks like, see how it can manoeuvre. Probably just very good. Everything I've seen from here so far says stay away from this, stay away from this ship, basically. Um, also, about that, I, from what I've been reading, this thing has probably got like the second largest warhead available on an anti-aircraft missile it this thing is designed for everything like the hq9 was meant for like guided ordinances bombs all that all that crazy stuff roger i just realized that i was uh, reading this a bit wrong so that is the range there versus air targets that is the range there versus missiles obviously we can shoot other missiles down uh s300 sweep patriot sweep or hhq9 can do that so it's five to seven kilometers uh, sorry it's 
5 to 7 to 25 kilometers versus missiles. So we expect to see that working, hopefully. Um, and it's 180 kilos with 30 meter blast radius. That's 90 feet. That's just extensive. A missile goes anywhere near you and you're toast. Uh, and I would say cold launch, medium range, two stage missile using thrust, a vector thrust with semi active and track via missile guidance. So uh, is that saying it has its own radar on board? Uh, this is like a combination of like a uh, ground-based control alongside semi-active. So the firing ship sends out a radar signal and bounces off the target, mm -hmm. and then it's received by the missile. Mm -hmm. Then it contacts the ship via data link, and then the uh, ship will give instructions to the missile. Roger. Okay. Um... Developed from HQ-9A. Okay, we've then got the anti-ship, uh, anti-surface ship missiles. No, sorry, scratch it. Let me just read. Uh, two times four YJ-6. These, these are the um, um, uh, God, come on, brain, uh, harpoon type missiles, or um, um, have I got that completely? Harpoon, wrong? but like this is like an entirely different thing. Roger. Okay, well let's just go with these VLS for a start. Uh, they are not. They're they launched. These are a mid. Okay, these are a midships launches uh, with uh, two times four and sixteen in the mag, uh, four hundred plus kilometers with a big uh, two hundred and ten semi armor piercing water. I still can't get over that one hundred and eighty kilo. That's four hundred pound of that HSQ nine. Christ. Um, I made a mistake. That should be eight missiles total and, and uh, two launchers. Right. So they've got none in the mag then. Okay, that's going to be interesting to see how that works out for it. That's not that many. Uh, Tomahawk inspired surface to surface missile using INS inertial navigation system GLONASS, uh, Beidou 2 GPS, passive radar, and data link, and terminal active mon pulse radar. Let's try and dissect that. So basically, it's a Tomahawk inspired surface to surface missile, so we can shoot at ships or possibly ground, we'll see. Um, and using basically a whole mixture of different methods of, of uh, uh, navigation. So it's got its own passive radar and data link terminal. So it's got all sorts of stuff there. And we usually do see it says passive radar. Do you know what you mean by that? It's very strange uh, to have a passive it's radar. Probably listening for uh, enemy radar signals, and I'll try to home in on that. Interesting. Wow. Uh, so it's very multi purpose by the looks of things. Um, yeah, some of it's required because it's just the range it's got 400 kilometers. Mm -hmm. We used to have that in the U.S. Navy. It was called the Tomahawk anti ship missile, missile or TASM. Mm -hmm. We eventually stopped using it due to accuracy issues because once you get that far out, even if ships moving in at 30 knots, there's a chance it might not be in the radar cone when it gets there. So this is probably their shot at doing a TASM type. Oh, it's strange thing. because um, if you look at equivalents, you look at uh, the Swedish RB-15, the English Sea Eagle, the NATO American. Uh, oh God, what's it called? The one the Hornets just got. The well, I can never harpoon. Yep. Uh, they, have, they have active radars. They get 10 miles away from the target and turn their own active radar on. And see, so I'm surprised this hasn't got... Oh, it does, sorry. And terminal active mon post radar. Sorry, I just misread that wrong. Yeah, so it does have its own radar that it turns on in terminal. Okay. Uh, very interesting. Very, yeah, very advanced sounding piece of kit there. You can do just about everything by the looks of it. Well, we'll give it a, give it a good test later on. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, two times, one times seven barrel type... Uh, 730s. Uh, which are the you know the Kashtan type Sea Whiz, as up to um, uh, 1.5 kilometers with max three kilometers uh, armor piercing frag, high explosive anti armor piercing, or training a seven barrel twenty ball Sea Whiz, variable RPM based on the Dutch goalkeeper. Okay, and they're very good. We've had a, uh, they can use uh, be used against ground targets as well as we find. Uh, we've got one times one HPJ87, which is going to be our gun, no doubt. Uh, six kilometers effective, eight kilometers max. It said that with the one on the, uh, the other destroyer, the 52B, we actually found it a lot longer. We found it was actually using it up to kind of 15 kilometers. So uh, these may be miles, or it may just be underrated or underreported. Or it could just have a bad source. <laughs> 
Roger. Um, probably a high explosive frag and air to air radio proximity fuse. So, you know, crash fuse for ground and proximity fuse for air. Uh, these can be used against air as well. With an RPM of 10 to 90, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, again, variable rate, 100 mil gun was noted to have jamming issues. Uh, we haven't made it jam yet. Uh, we have torpedo tubes. Are these kind of amidships or are these hull? They're probably going to be on the deck, aren't they? Torpedo I tube? Think, I think they may be uh, probably like in the hull somewhere. I can't remember. All right, we'll have a look at that. So two times three, uh, three to four mil. That probably is about a foot, about a thirteen-inch torpedo tubes carrying YU seven torpedo uh, for use at ten kilometers at forty-three knots with a forty-five uh, kilo explosive, which is mm, fairly small. But okay, based on Italian ET five two and Mark forty-six mod with a four hundred meter max depth. Okay. Uh, anything else before we move on to aircraft? Yep, uh, that's. Yeah, that U7s is based off of lightweight torpedoes. Yeah, they are small, aren't they? Very small, but... Okay, it is a destroyer at the end of the day. It wouldn't be right without torpedoes. Um, okay, aircraft. We can carry a... Um, so we can carry an aircraft. KA-28C Helix A. You know, a reporting name with a range of 200 kilometers. A speed of that. Uh, cargo of 5 tons. PSB modification made by the Chinese has a magnetic anomaly detector or possibly towed sonar array options. So those are for submarine hunting in those in yep. that case. Possible loadouts. You can have two times uh, YU-7 small diameter torpedoes as we've talked about already or uh, 16 to 24 sonar boys. Are they, do you drop those sonar boys off here? Yeah, yeah you, you fly nearby where you think it's at and you drop it in there and you, you have it listening. I'll talk back to your mothership then it'll Roger. adds to Roger or if we are sub hunting which is you know um, sort of destroyer is about uh, a modern destroyer but then we've got depth charges as well okay or a ZC9 Hay 10 helicopter I don't know what this is but it's a thousand kilometers range uh, and it's that fast which is pretty cool based on the Z9 uh, some are French Dolphin based, some are Black Panther variations, has searched surface radar and towed array sonar. Uh, imitations of the um, of the American type. I can never remember the name of it. Lamps, I guess. Uh, can date link with the. Is that the gun? No, sorry. Can date link with the anti submarine uh, missiles mid flight and can equip with cannon or search radar targeting pods. Some have searched. That's lights. the uh, anti ship missile. Is it the anti ship? Right, sorry. Yep. Yeah. I'm working right. That's the anti-ship missile, which is actually that's the old one from the yeah. I thought that didn't match. The 52B. Uh, it's that one there. It should be the YJ62, shouldn't it? Um, and that's a uh, thing about these modern aircraft is that you can, if you want to find a bad guy, you don't know where he is over the horizon. You send a helicopter out a thousand kilometers, well, maybe not that, not that far, but you know, a few hundred kilometers away. They'll find the ship. They will data link back the position of the hostile ship, and that'll allow you to fire your missiles what 400 kilometers away uh, to blow it up. It's uh, quite ridiculously good. Uh, possible yeah. loadouts. We've got sonar boys, uh, 12 passive, four active, one seawater temp, one maritime environmental options, or two times torpedoes as before, or two times similar uh, ET-52 torpedoes. Anything about the aircraft, Ayushi? Uh Yeah, they're phasing out the uh, the KAs for the Xena. Roger. So that's a new superior helicopter. Roger. Um, do you want to read out the notes? Yep. This ship, from an ASW perspective, is lacking in some areas. Compared to most destroyers, only has one helo and shorter range torpedoes, but it added the sonar array, which is nice. From an air defense and anti-sub or surface perspective, this ship is very potent. It should be given the same respect to those armed with S300Fs or SM2 SAMs. The HHQ9s are closer to SM2s, but less agile due to being heavier. Warhead, good example. The radar systems are very advanced and keyed for long-range combat for both ships and aircraft. While there's a little bit of a safe zone between the close-range anti-aircraft and longer range missiles, you have the problem of actually getting there first. Because if you look at the minimum range between the aircraft uh, rate for the HHQ-9s and the uh, the closer range sea is there's a, a couple kilometers to play with. Right. But 
Yeah, good luck getting there. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. You never know. You never know. Okay, images. So here we are firing off a... Uh, should that be YJ-62? Uh, yes. I'm just going to change that. YJ-62, so, you know, the uh, the anti-surface missile, typical jet engine. So it's, uh, it's going to be a rocket to begin with, and that will fall off, and it will become a... Uh, a jet powered uh, missile. We here we've got the 346, the main radar. Um, you can see how it's kind of Aegis based in that it's got these panels. It's, do you know how many of these panels it's got on the ship? Is it two, four? I don't know. There's we'll a lot the of them, but we'll see in the model. Uh, forward to here, we've got the VLS launchers uh, for the HH9 launchers uh, with crane. Where's the crane? That must be the crane there then. Yep, middle. Yeah, um, two obscured by the superstructure, so that must be uh, there. And there, okay. Uh, here we got the layout of the five two C. So this is going to be interesting. So dark, kind of purpley blue is the thirty six Sams HHQ nine. Uh, here we got the gum, hundred millimeter radio guided gum. Here we've got front C whiz. Uh, then we've got the back C whiz uh, with those independent sensors. Uh, here we've got four times. It looks like we've got four times Aegis sensors. Um, kind of the same as uh, the uh, uh, American cruisers, except they're kind of mounted 45 degrees, which is interesting. Uh, here we've got the US uh, purple, the USBD. Remind me, they. Oh, uh, uh, no, sorry. We've got the radar uh, type 344. That's the bandstand. Was, it was the bandstand for the gun. I've forgotten. Yep. Bandstand and also the, the two in the back, I'm pretty sure, is the light bulbs. Yeah. Which is the uh, the two domes we couldn't identify last time. Ah, we're going to learning. We are learning. Okay, uh, we've got the type 4347 rice lamp. Remind me what the rice lamp is. Oh, no, sorry, that's for the that's for the gun and the uh, sea whiz, isn't it? Yes. Roger. Then we've got the big boy at the top. We've got the 364, which is also going to be integrated with the Aegis here, uh, right at the top. And navigation radars there and there by the looks of it. Yep, that is uh, navigation radars, three of them by the looks of it. Uh, we've got type 517M at the back there. Remind me, is that... What's the 517M? Yep, that's the uh, the P-Sticks VHF radar. Ah, how interesting. I've not seen an antenna like that before. That's interesting. Yeah, it it is really old school. Like, they've mm -hmm. been going back to some of the World War II methods to pick up some of these uh, stuff. So this is anti-stealth, yeah, because I can see that looks like the kind of thing you'd have on your house 50 years ago to pick up TV. How interesting. So you've got VHF coming back to VHF again to beat the F-22 and whatnot. Very interesting. Uh, right, we've got... Oh, we've got VLS at the back. I wasn't aware of that. I assumed it was at the front only. So 12 of the SAMs are at the back, look. Yeah, that's why I had the uh, the 2 times 6 and then 6 times 6 There's two of, the, right. two of them in the back. Roger. Here we have the torpedoes, which appear to be hull... It looks like they're hull-mounted. Can't see them on the deck. So, yeah, okay. Uh, here we've got the... I forget the... Oh, there we go. The 70, part of the 76 series. The You know, the the launchers, chaff flare launchers and whatnot here. Or uh, sets. Uh, here we've got the missiles. So these are the anti-surface missiles, the 6-2s. They're four pointing this way, four pointing that way. Uh, we've got another... Yeah. One cache down there or another sea whiz there and uh, oh and here is electronic warfare so here's part of the electronic warfare suite around uh, the a mast as you can see Roger. excellent um that's that nice piece of kit uh here's the sources if you want to freeze frame that right anything else before we go and um sail it on dcs daishi I can't wait to see what this thing does. It it looks really impressive. Roger, stand by. Okay, so here we have our ship in DTS. As you can see, it's a high fidelity model. It is a good quality model, uh, high polygon mesh, and as well as that, it has a, a decent damage model, so you can blow bits off it, blow the funnel off it, blow the bridge off it, stuff like that. Um, so we can see everything exactly as we predicted. We've got the helipad and the hangar back there. We've got, if I can get the pointer out, let's see if I can get it, there it is. Uh, we've got the rear 730 there, the rear 12 VLS there. We've got the four uh, decoy launchers there, chaff flare and whatnot. We've got the eight times tubes for the uh, 62s, Harpoon equivalent. We've got the link there, 
Uh, remind me what the link is. Is that data yep. link? Yep, that's the uh, light bulb for light bulb. Yep. part of uh, bandstand. Here's the old World War Two VHF for picking up the stealth. Here is the engine room and uh, boilers and whatnot. Crane for gear. No, the crane for those boats it's going to be, isn't it? Uh, if we move up to the front superstructure, you can see the Aegis equivalents here. Aegis, panels, A, B, C, D, and E around the front there. We've got a 730 there. We've got floaters there. We've got the front VLS there and the main 36 launchers. We've got the 100mm gun there. Uh, sailing gear there. What else have we got? We've got the bridge. We've got the bandstand there. We've got the uh, rice, is that the rice bowl? Rice bowl there. We've got the one, two, you see the two spinning navigation radars there. Uh, might also be one there and there, I'm not entirely sure. We've got the EW, uh, ELINT and whatnot here, here, there, there. Pretty sure that's going to be part of it. And also on the top to that, that tip up there. That is uh, for EW as well. Yep. Roger, understood. And we've got the 346 there primary 3d uh, so it's really sorted piece of kit that is 7,000 tons of super heavy destroyer 29 knots and uh, yeah that's a tough that's a big that's a that's a well-armed destroyer okay so that concludes our visual now we're gonna oh yeah hole number 150 yeah Roger now we've got to show driving around so you can be if we're going to here we can be two slot we can either be a game master or we can be a tactical commander. We're going to be a game master here. And we're going to move our ship. We're going to press on it. We can ROE fire, return fire, or hold. These are modal. We can have our states green, red, or automatic. No one really seems to know what automatic does, but red is usually the safest. The speed uh, in miles per hour slider. If we want to set a path, then we left click on set path. And then we go uh, left click, left click, and to finish the path, right click as our path and let's just uh, put our speed up and see if we can get him moving it does take a while as ever combined arms controlling ships is clunky you may have to sometimes issue them commands three or four times until they actually do it that's just how it is but off he goes and he will go and get them so the next thing we're going to do is add a target it's two different way real ways of targeting if you're excluding mission editor targeting which we're not going to look at today this is combined arms targeting we can do uh, do a long range shot, which is add target, and we're going to go and choose us a little target. See if we can get this working. Just going to do a ground target there. Uh, see if we can get a single shot off. Now we'll only do it once he's in range. Uh, that may not be for a while. Oh, the guns are already moved up, so we might get a shot off. Let's see. Oh, we did. So it's um, completely underestimated the distance. You see, that's eight miles. About about fifteen kilometers. Nice. Let's see if we can get an impact. I mean, that's eight miles pretty much over the horizon shooting. Oh, look at that. Bang. Perfect. Lovely job. Let's see if we can get a uh, target shot. This may or may not work because our range is uh, technically over the horizon at the moment. I know it doesn't look like it. Uh, if we go add targets, add one of these guys. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I think you killed one of that with that lob shot too. Yeah, I think I did. No, it's not going to do that. It's too uh, too far away from that. Uh, so what we're going to do next is we are going to go in for some close range firing. So if we now set this to fire and we move up close to these guys here, we'll go for a full broadside. We can um, it will shoot if it sees them within its visual range, uh, uh, within the, uh, without over the horizon. It will start shooting these guys on their own. It, we don't need to tell to shoot something as long as it's um, visible. Um, um, within the horizon so what we'll do is we'll come back once we've got our ship broadsided to these guys stand by okay we're coming in for a broadside now oh and they've started firing already you see we didn't need to tell them to fire it's detected the hostile units it's you know within the horizon 100 mils going and now the uh, the rotary cannon is going Get some. That's interesting. It's shooting like the 54A, where it's like taking its time to get a target, unlike the 52B, where it's just going at it. Roger. Different intelligence in there, I guess. 
Trying to get the cash tan and the big gun firing at the same time. Oh, it's not doing too bad. Chewing its way through them. The time, the time, the rate of fire is quite slow because um, it's having to choose targets between each shot. You wait until it's, wait until it's firing at a ship, it will be pow, 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 pow. Also, any one of the cash tans is firing, which is interesting. Yeah, also, I think it's one-shotting all the, uh, all the vehicles, so it's having a re reacquire yeah. that's probably slowing it down. Roger. Oh look, the other cash tank started firing now. Never get tired of this. Very full of this. There you go. Pretty cool destructive power. Out of interest, Aisha, I don't see any half inches or anything um, around the deck. Um, uh, do you reckon that's accurate? I mean, I mean, how do you take on skivs and stuff like that? Um, I have two possibilities. One of them is, is that that cannon is smaller than the guns you would have on, like, a US destroyer. So it could be that they decided to what the difference their thing is it could be that they have personnel mounted weapons to deal with them yeah and since it's not mounted to the ship it doesn't count as its armament Roger. makes sense okay well there you go just just destroyed uh pretty much a brigade of brigade of um light armor which is uh, good fun right next we're going to show is anti uh ship weaponry it's going to start using these little beauties and uh, hopefully a sea wizards we'll have to we'll have to see so we're going to set up a fight and report back okay first test uh we're going to see if we can shoot a guy over the horizon about 100 kilometers away so we're going to get our 5-2 destroy here we're going to attack target and it may or may not work we're going to attack that moving target there and let's see if we can get our lovely little 150 destroyer to fire yes look the the tubes are coming up so those are the YJ-62s, right? Yep. I've always been interested in why they mount them like this. All modern ships launch the, their anti-surface uh, missiles. I think my screen locked up. Oh, that's a shame. You're missing all the good stuff. Alright, I'll come and fix it in a minute. That's four YJs out. I think that's all he's going to send out for now. Sixty-two. Can you see it, Daiji? We're missing the action. We've got um, four times YG sixty-two is out. So let's see what I let's see if he defends himself. We have told him to defend himself, but it is coming on a frontal aspect. So we'll just see what happens. I suppose those things are bunched up really nasty. They are. They're also slow and not particularly low, which is interesting. A two hundred. Well, this is cruise only. This isn't terminal. These will hit terminal at some point and probably change their attack profile. Interestingly, they are very slow. Uh, usually, and that is why it gets such good range, probably because it's a small motor in there. No, we're terminal now, and it's no, not diving. Uh, and they're going to get shot down with HQ sixteen. So let's go and look at that. Not low enough, sir. Not low enough. Well, oh, that really does look like a tomahawk. It does look like a tomahawk, doesn't it? It's just a tomahawk, I think. Tomahawks aren't low flyers. And like, they can if you got the right tech in it, but it's usually like the more advanced ones, like the Turleys, Deltas, and Echoes. These are shit. If you're gonna fly 200 feet, then you've gotta fly a Mach 3, like the Russians do. Um, you can't, if you're gonna, you can't fly 200 feet and fly at 400 knots, you're just sitting duck. So that's, um, that was pretty crap. All right, now let's try uh, a dogfight. Okay, so we're just going to spectate here, I guess. Uh, now we've got a fight between our 5-2C destroyer and a contemporary 054A frigate, Chinese. And this is, you know, just because it's a frigate and that's a destroyer, don't put it down. This is a really well-armed piece of kit. Uh, this is. It's not Aegis, I don't think, but it is VLS. 
so it's uh, comparable it's got side mounted phalanxes of uh, the same type or very similar type so uh, the 3d search radar it's a bit different as you can see but it's all top notch shit so let's see what happens we're gonna uh, they'll only engage each other after they'll only engage each other when they see each other so that is over the uh, sorry under the horizon so that will be within you know the, looking at seeing the mast or something that is going to be about 20 miles something like that so we're going to zoom it forward at some point we're going to start seeing those yj's oh oh look how equal they are oh no these no scratch it these are sending the yj a3s uh and these anti-ship missiles and these are sending hq9s which are the uh, sams and the yj 62s out so this is interesting um, I'll find out who to follow now. This is a YJ-63 from the frigate. And let's have a look at what the SAMs look like. Those are the SAMs. They look like S-300s. Can't get them quick enough. You can see the vector thrust nozzles on the, on the back. Right, what's happened? All of the 83s got shot down. But the two YJ-62s are still coming. So can this guy with his VLS um, um, SAMs... Uh, I can't remember what this guy fires. Um, what does he fire? S300F maybe? I can't remember. Um, HQ-16. They're more of a short or medium range short missile. Medium range, right. So the difference here is this destroyer's got a SAM which will do 100 plus kilometers. This guy's got short range, 10, 20 kilometers. We can't, I can't remember exactly. It might be the booked equivalent. I can't, it's been a while 30. since we studied that. Um, okay, so let's uh, fast forward these YJ's 62s. Uh, now, interestingly, what's better, the YJ-62 or the YJ-83? I don't have the answer to that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, and the engagement range was, I should say, uh, they saw each other at 20 miles under the horizon. So yeah, the 16s are coming out now. Yeah, these are the bucks. Remember, these are the bucks. They're going to blast those 6-2s out, the, out of the air. In terms of engagement, these ships, I think, are pretty evenly matched, you know? Yeah. It's just the uh, the destroyer for some reason has much longer ranged equipment. Roger, it'll be down to almost certainly this will go down to guns. Now the problem is, I think everyone's used their missiles. Let's go and have a look. Uh, this guy has used those. No, hang on. No, he hasn't. Only fired two. He's got plenty of. Here they go. There's another two out. Uh, the range of the 83s and the 62 seems the same. Let's see what this guy's fired. Again, a midship's mounted. Can't tell what he's fired. He's fired, I think, at least four. They've got a different yeah, attack profile. Well, this guy fires batches of four. This guy fires batches of two. Yeah, there's a good chance that he's not going to have any more unless if he uh, turns around to get the other launchers ready. Yeah. Of course, same for the 52C. Yeah, it's interesting. So it's the same thing. Uh, the uh, 16s are going to come out and uh, nuke them, basically. Boom. Boom. Okay. Right. Is it down to guns? And at what range? Who's got the better gun? I think. So this is 100 mil, and I can't remember if this is... 80 mil or 70 mil. I think it's a like 70 mil. But I also think it's slightly, it's a slightly newer gun, but it might be shorter ranged. Okay. We're going to be way off fighting because we're only at uh, 80 miles. Got a long way to go. I'll check that range now. I think something's happening. No, scratch it. It isn't. Um, at 10 miles, so we're going to be soon. Firing our gun, I reckon. Our radar is going to be able to see the hull of the ship enough that we can... Uh... Another thing to say that I didn't know as well is that the radars, the fire control radars for this gun, so this guy up here, um, you can see him turning. Did you see that, ra that radar turn? The, um, Ooh, the yeah. rice bowl, it just turned. And the gun is firing is turned as well. So it's got that rice bowl simulated there. And what I'm going to say, the, race, the rice bowl doesn't just... Sorry, just let me just talk a minute. The rice bowl doesn't just detect the enemy ship, it detects the splashes from this gun. 
when the bullets hit the water and then automatically changes the elevation of the gun based on the splashes uh, which I find an uh, interesting piece of knowledge I didn't know about other guy other guy's not firing yet he's about to get a nasty shot now travel time 10 miles for these shells is a long time we'll be waiting a few minutes before they even start to land Yeah, I think it's just smaller gun, less range. But once it gets in range, I think that thing's gonna open up a case. It's quite an interesting. Oh, here they come! Here they come! So we're straddling. We're straddling at even at 10 miles. So well, this is really accurate fire. If you compare it to World War Two. You'll be lucky, lucky to get a sal salvo struggle like straddle like this at 10 miles. Here we go. It's on. He stopped. Why is he stopped? Is something being put out of action? I don't know. Oh yes! Superstructure hits! Superstructure hits! Wow, you can see damage, I can see damage. Still got his fire control radar. Oh, so many rounds in the air. Poor little man. At least I guess he's got going from there, he's just so small. I just saw a superstructure hit there. More superstructure hits. I think I see smoke over there. Got impacts. Again, ac very accurate radar guided fire. Straddling ship already. We've got hull damage at the front. More superstructure hits. Doesn't seem to be hitting the important stuff right now, though. No, agreed. Oh, on the bridge! I was on the bridge. This is a good fight. I love it when it goes down to guns. It's like old, proper old school battleship fighting. The destroyer is more accurate. The destroyer with its with its radar. It's just look at the, the amount of hits we're getting. Constant hits. That's the fire control yeah. radar knocked out. The frigate yeah, we're within. absolutely destroyed. I don't think we even got hit on the destroyer. The rate of fire, the power of the fire, the size of the shells, and most importantly, the accuracy of the fire control radar was just too much for for the poor little frigate. Oh, the rounds are still landing. One just hit the destroyer. Yeah, I think the other thing that's playing into it too is that we're probably still... We're not within the effective range for the frigate, whereas the destroyer, it's in its happy place right now. Roger, he's down to 40% life. And our destroyer has been hit, but he's still perfectly workable. This guy's fire control radars are down. He probably couldn't launch air to air or anything right now. When, they had, when did they add in those health bars? I, nice. um, yeah, I just remembered the last um, the last thing they did. The last update. Yeah, big holes in the hull. That is a sinking, probably a sinking ship at this point. Um, depending on how where that hit is, how they can compartmentalise it. Maybe they could, maybe they could uh, seal it off. Yeah. I'd at this point, I would probably say you're probably having more problems with fires. Yeah, fires. Although there is a big hole in the front of the ship. Yeah, that's taking on a lot of compartmental water going on. It's sinking! Sinking, Daishi. I think it's sinking. Look at look how low she's riding. No, maybe that's my eyes. I think that's my eyes. Oh, hard to tell. Yeah, I think it's just the weight. Check the life for. Oh my god, it's about to die. It's about to die. Poor little frigate. 
Oh, another direct hit. Get up on heck of a fight. Stop. I think it's dead. Absolutely yeah. mullered. Where, where is it gone? The crew, where's the destroyer gone? Yeah. That is That's dead. That's a KO. That's a dead ship. We'll come back to that in a mic and that will be sinking. Bless him. He tried so hard, but... It shows the mighty superiority of this destroyer. It really is a big one. Now remember, we've had that frigate up against the 52B. And I think the frigate actually won last time. So it shows the superiority of the 52C over the 52B with VLS, with the gun, fire control radar, with the 346 for long range. Uh, yeah, it just absolutely mullers it, doesn't it? Well. Yeah. Uh, the thing that got me was just the fire rate on that VLS. Yeah, was, it was really good. Wow. The stern's going down. Look. They couldn't. They couldn't. Uh, they couldn't compartmentalize it. Daishi, it's going down. Yeah, welcome to Davy Jones' locker. <laughs> I wonder in real life if that would snap or not. Um, it could, you know, like it depends where all the water is and such. So there's forces that would play to that. Boom. Very good. He's dead. Excellent. Very, very good. Anything on surface to surface before I go and fly some aeroplanes, that's it? I don't know, it's like I'm curious about the... about those, uh... Tomahawk-like things, like I would imagine they'd be meant for, like, destroyer group, or, sorry, carrier groups, but it's... I don't know, it just seems like there's something missing, and I'm not sure... Roger. Alright, well I'm gonna leave you with that thought then. Say the tricky part is probably going to be for it, it's... Missiles aren't as maneuverable as SM2s, but... Uh, you're going to have a really long time dodging. Roger. Okay, I'm going to fly a flanker. Um, 70, 80 miles away at the moment. Let's see how hard it is to beat. Uh, probably very hard is going to be the answer. But we'll see. Uh, now, we think there may be a weak spot in this vehicle in that it may be between the maximum range of the uh, 730s and the minimum range of the HHQ-9s. Now, a lot of older ships would have had a intermediate missile, a low-range missile, to fill that gap. This this guy does not have that um, intermediate range, Sam. So maybe the HHQ-9s are just so good they don't need that intermediate. So we'll just have to see. Uh, of course, the body up in an airship to help cover that. Roger, I'm so far away at the moment. I'm probably still over the horizon. 60 miles at 050. Right, let's just skip time now. a missile out at so I'm visible at 50 miles I'm over the horizon and well not much more to say 50 miles immense power let's gonna have a look at that missile and the speed it's doing it said it's a two-stage um, in the review but doesn't not obviously two-stage here uh, you can see the you can see the vectored thrust platelets around the side there I can't really get a good view without getting really loud there yeah, you see them? The little hydraulics and whatnot. So although it's That's a big cool. missile, and the problem is, whoops. Maximum speed. The problem is, e even Maximum if I dodge speed. this, within 90 feet it will blow me up. So even if I dodge it, I can't beat it. It's incredibly frustrating. See what we can do, Daishi. Now, it's only going to be so good. Beating it. Up we go. Let's go in again. See how close we can get. That's oh, locked me already. Cheeky bastard. So it's locked and fired again. Um, this old missile self destructed. I can see this could be a difficult game of cat and mouse. 
want to see if I can do is I can scratch that missile straight away. I'm not beating it, that's just a blind spot on my RWR. But yeah, back on course. A very powerful lock radar. And a very quick clocking radar as well. Yeah, that's the power of the uh, of that phased array radars. Oh shit, missiles are coming at me. My RWR is not working. Nothing worse than the malfunctioning RWR. Yeah, I think I beat it. Yep, beat it. Oh, this could take all days. It's fires at me so quick. I'm interested, last time it fired at me and it didn't give me a warning. I'm wondering if that's some kind of track or scan ability. I really don't know, but it definitely didn't give me a warning last time. I'm getting a bit closer. 24 miles now. Oh, I see it now. Hello. Right, let's scrub those. Oh really? Fires oh, locked so quickly. Look at that one, it blew right next to me. Did you see that? Oh. Now these warheads, these frag warheads aren't omnidirectional, they explode in a ring. Uh, so it can explode, it can explode in front of me. Uh, just a couple of feet and it won't hit me, but if it blows beside me, it'll have a massive range. Oh, come on, dude. I'm like above the horizon for a second and it gets me. It's a ages. It's just stupid. Luckily, the missiles still have to obey physics, so we can still beat them at range, but the lock is so yeah. quick, there's very little I can do to get in there. It's kind of scary to think about how close uh, arcade radar does exist nowadays. Roger, yeah. It's that reaction time. It's locking me at this altitude, a four meters altitude. S stupid. Nothing I do to get in there. Oh, and I've lost him, where is he? Really? I guess I could run him out of missiles. Literally my only defense against this guy. I've actually lost situational awareness. Here he's off to my left. Stop it! Stop it! I'm under his radar, but he can still lock me. It can't fire at me, luckily. So it's actually the fire control radar that can't see me, but the main radar can see me. How close are you right now? Uh, I don't know. I can't get a chance to go and look. He's just to my right. You, you may have hit that sweet spot I was mentioning. Can you see it? Because I can't see it anywhere. Oh! Yeah, it's too hard. He was firing at me there. I was nine meters off the ground. It's just too advanced, I think. Um, whatever. If that's a 346, if that's the Aegis plates, uh, so it's the wrong ship. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's just impossible to get under. If it was that frigate, I could probably get under its radar, uh, get under it at six meters and slam it. But this sees you anywhere. So, mm, unfair, Captain. Yeah. So probably the best, uh, the Americans will get annoyed at me, probably the best uh boat at the moment in terms of ability to destroy stuff because even a ticonderoga i can go below a ticonderoga radar i've done it before in a mission but that you can't go underneath it interesting right very yeah. good stuff um anything you want to add to that daiji um i think part of that spy one radar i'm not sure if it's modeled correctly on a ticonderoga or if it's just it's 
following an earlier one. If we ever do get the early Berk, it's probably going to be just about like this. Watch out. We might need to go back and do the Tigondaroga. Um, I did the Moskva on the Tigonga Road at the beginning on my own, and I had no idea what I was doing. Complete bollocks. Um, so we might have to do that at some point. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and see you later.